What's up everyone and welcome to Dan's Digital Playground. Never in a million years did I think that I could be contributing to global public health just by sitting on my couch. Stuck at home, people have gotten very creative with their boredom. They have transformed into professional singers, gourmet chefs, and even have still been able to play their favorite sports. However, on a macro level, countries have adopted different mobility control policies, which has translated into different economic repercussions. For example, in Vietnam, they imposed targeted mobility restrictions, which minimized the health toll, but dealt a very heavy blow to its economy. In the UK, early indecision reaped havoc. In the second quarter, the country's GDP plunged 20.4%, what this shows is that mobility, or the loss of it, can be used as an economic indicator. For the last six months, Lohan Academy has investigated how countries are doing amid the pandemic and have proposed a five-phase framework. From here, they developed the Pandemic Economy Tracker, or PET, which uses publicly available mobility data coupled with COVID-19 data to give an accurate estimate of economic contraction, but also economic recovery. Hey, Jax. Hello, Dan. You ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. A few moments later. Come on, Jax. Come on, Jax. Come on, man. Wow. Jax really needs to work out more. But the main thing to take away from this is that PT is like a smartwatch. While a smartwatch measures my health data, PET tracks 132 countries, accounting for 90% of the world's population and 97% of the world's GDP. The PET tracks two indicators. The x-axis is the pandemic indicator, i.e. the number of days it takes for the number of confirmed cases to double, which is a proxy for how fast the virus is spreading. The y-axis is the economic indicator, i.e. how active the economy is when measured with mobility. The upper right-hand corner of the graph is the ideal state for any country battling the pandemic. Let's look at an example. Upon detection of its first case, Spain spent one month in the preparation phase before moving into the response phase. In the preparation phase, its economic activity dropped more than 27%. It stayed at this low level for 16 days, which is the trough phase. After that, the pandemic was basically kept in check, and the recovery phase started. Starting from here, the pet curve moved upwards and rightwards. By mid-June, the country's economic activity had bounced back to 90%. As restrictions loosened, a new wave of the pandemic started in early July. Clearly, the virus will continue to coexist with us. Not until we have fully entered the vaccination phase can we start a gradual process of decoupling the economy from the pandemic. Now, the pace of economic recovery largely depends on vaccine development. There are quite a few vaccines already in clinical trials, which offers a glimpse of hope as we jointly combat COVID-19. However, the vaccination phase involves many complex processes like production, procurement, distribution, and efficiency tracking. Plus, countries differ a lot when it comes to financial strength and governmental systems. So that phase will last quite a while. The pandemic economy is far from over, and the top priority for decision makers all over the world is how to restart and recover their economy. At the same time, they are flooded with numerous news reports leading to what people call an infodemic. PET offers decision makers a clear picture on how to manage the economy and the epidemic so that they can make the best decision when it counts. Let us know what you think of PET. And also, stay tuned for the next episode. Get back here, Jax!
I'm Dan, and see you on the next episode. So, how's life, man? Thank you.